Can you earn a living from 3D printing? Well, Miles does, and his advice is well worth listening to. <music> 3D printers have the capability to make products without any upfront investment in tooling or molds. Therefore, they have the ability to fill a niche and be profitable. Today, Miles has been kind enough to open the doors to his business and share some of his knowledge. And the good thing about this is this is not a large company. This is relatable. Miles is just a regular guy and a maker like you and me, but he has some great tips on how you can make money with your 3D printer and potentially run a business. Can you start by describing the nature of your business? The nature of the business is to produce generally automotive parts. So whether that's made via either 3D printing or uh, plasma cutting, laser cutting, uh, different manufacturing methods, whether we you know, outsource it for milling. Um, but yeah, basically to make automotive parts is generally what we do here. I'm guessing you're not trying to take on large auto manufacturers. So is it more that you're making upgrade or modification parts? So we have uh, like a niche area that we work for where basically you'll have a product made by manufacturer A and it's got to fit to a car manufacturer's vehicle and so we make the part that sort of sits in the middle there so say you've bought an electronics module or something that requires a bracket to sit somewhere generally that's what we do so it's sort of uh, to speed up the installation process for another company essentially. What was the old solution for this what type of thing are you replacing? Many hours uh, generally fabricating little bits and pieces in a shop. They would sit there with a grinder, sit there on a linisher, make it the shape they needed to make. Could take two, three, four hours depending on what they're trying to make. And what they do with us is they buy our part and it's already pre-cut, pre-made, um, and they just uh, bolt it into the vehicle. Do you do any marketing? How do people know that you exist? Uh, well, mainly a lot of our work is done through uh, wholesale. So where we would have gone to the first few companies and gone, hey, this is our product, this is what we make, we're a niche company, we can make what you want. Um, we then, um, it, it was word of mouth from there. So that company spoke to this company and then spoke to that company. And why do you use 3D printing for your manufacturing? We're not in the millions of uh, units a month, we're in sort of in the thousands. So we're making bespoke parts. If you're going to do millions, you would use injection molding or high-end laser cutting where we're sort of doing in the thousands. So 3D printing works for us at the moment. So you sell parts you've already created, but do customers also come to you wanting something completely custom designed for them? I do. Generally, um, I'll have someone come up to me and say, hey, we've run out of this from manufacturer A, um, maybe something like because of COVID, we can't get them. Can you make something as either a stopgap or as a replacement uh, for us going forward? In that case, how important are CAD skills to your business? They are the business in regards. So um, without the CAD skills, um, I wouldn't be able to produce any parts. Um, you obviously can't design anything. You can't do anything. Um, you're basically stuck with printing from my manufacturing thing universe, anything like that. So you can't actually create the part that you need to create to sell it. So um, and you're relying on someone else to do that, which um, isn't really viable in economical sense. I think the general public don't really understand the nitty gritty of 3D printing. So does that lack of understanding come across in your customers? And does that present any challenges? The difficulty I personally had with customers is uh, they don't believe that 3D printing parts are strong enough to do what we need them to do. Um, obviously, as you know, you can there's orientations, there's layouts, there's if you're designing the part, you can design it around the manufacturing process that you're using. One side of the issue that I have is um, obviously that you know they're saying they're not strong enough but the amount of quantity that we sell um, can prove otherwise the other thing is is they don't understand the time that it takes so they just think that i've got you know uh, thousands of these products sitting on a shelf where generally it's made to order so we do keep stock of some things but we have to we're always working the machines are always going 24 7 to keep up with it so to make these car parts what filament do you use so we use ABS, um, black ABS is uh, generically what we use. I've noticed a lot of crackling if you use like a sparkle filament or something like that. So we generally just stick to black. External use um, on cars is generally okay. If it's going to be outdoors, then because ABS isn't exactly UV safe, we'll um, uh, cover it in a UV uh, sealant. So either some sort of paint, texture coat, something like that to make sure that it's sealed up so that it'll last. 
internal wise where you've got like a, a cabin filling up depending again on the product and how you're building it if you've got something that's quite thick walled um it's fine um even in the australian heat we've had prints spin in cars for a while and not had any problems abs can be pretty tricky to print so what 3d printers do you use and how do you tackle that warping uh so we use uh i3 Mark III's uh, from Prusa, um, or a clone thereof sometimes, depending on the cost of them to get them into Australia, they can be quite expensive by the time we pay our import duties and so on and so forth. Um, but that with the PEI sheet um, enclosed, um, using these timber boxes we use just to keep the heat in and the fumes in. As you can see, there's quite a bit of uh, um, sort of ghosting of ABS fumes or oil that's appearing on the, on the glass. Generally, when we're here uh, working um, they're not always running, as in they'll run through the night time when there's no one sitting in this actual area. So uh, we do have a fan um, just behind you at the moment that will blow air out um, behind us here just to sort of keep the air flowing and fresh. We just move the displays down. The boxes are only 600 deep and the printer won't actually um, extend all that far with the, with, the, uh, with the display on there. The electronics are fine. They're happy to sit inside the box. They actually, that's what's giving like the uh, i assume the power supply and the heated bed is what's giving the temperature into the box uh, and they generally sit about 45 degrees celsius ambient inside the boxes um, and it's been fine like the, the the abs doesn't warp it doesn't want to lift up uh, when we do put a printer outside on the bench for say for testing and um, we do a square pattern we will notice that it lifts so it's definitely helping to have them enclosed have you always just used prusa or have you tried other brands of printer so I've got a couple of Two Trees uh, Sapphire Pros. Um, originally, we couldn't run uh, like BL touches on them, so we changed them out for Big Tree Tech boards. Um, although the print quality on those boards is really good, the uh, uptime and to keep them running is is really bad. I mean, this is just could be my own personal uh, experience with them, but they've just been really shocking in the sense of uh, you might get one good set of prints out of them uh, and then you'll have a leveling issue or you'll have a filament issue or the the um, it'll jam up because the hot end fan fails or whatever reason the Prusas just seem to they're really simplistic that that INC board is really simple and it can just uh, take a print after print after print and it doesn't care um, basically they've been sort of a, a rock solid workhorse for us for a while do you give your printers special names? One through seven, ten, basically. Uh, I run a Raspberry Pi system for uh, running Octoprint one for each machine, and I have a PC behind me that I use for um, uh, naming them, so we just call them one through six. Um, there's no Daisy and Dolly and anything like that involved in them. It's, they're just printers. So it looks like the printers are fairly stock, but I can see some modification, for instance, a bare kit that you're halfway through fitting. The bear kit, um, we've found that once you start printing uh, the taller layers, um, we notice some some wobble in them. Um, so the bear kits have sort of alleviated that and they're a bit quieter I've found um, and they're a bit easier to work on I find is that the, the parts are a bit more up to date. There's actually like a, a, a GitHub of ongoing uh, refreshed parts for them. But overall they're a stock machine. So it's a stock hot end, um, there's no extra cooling fins on the on the on the stepper motors or anything like that it's just a uh, a bog stock printer so you've got orders to fill and 3d printers can be unreliable how do you manage that do you have some sort of redundancy strategy generally if you've got a printer you want it running is the way you want to see it because an asset sitting there doing nothing is a wasted asset there is a few swear words when they do if they do eventually break down we have we still have issues with them breaking down there's um thermistors and things that generally go on them or or um you know heated bed wires will break eventually like they're not infallible we'll have a couple here that either are just not performing like maybe they're they're just getting a bit too old they've done a few too many prints they're just skipping steps or they're they're as i say they're jamming up or whatever they're doing we just put them to one side and then in an emergency we'll pull them back in and try and make them work again um otherwise we're just using them for parts so that's 3d printers but what other goodies do you use so we recently just got a swift cut uh, plasma cutter uh, CNC plasma cutter so um, we can sort of move to that point where we're not just 3d printing now we can start to make parts that are composite adding a production method obviously changes your whole outlook of the rest of what you're building so we'll make a metal bracket with a plastic cover instead of making a fully plastic bracket um, solve some of those issues where customers think they're not strong enough we can reinforce things with metal instead 
would you say that you're essentially a 3D printing business? So we're not a 3D printing company. We are a parts manufacturing business. So uh, whether it's automotive or something else we need to make at the time, um, but we use multiple versions of, of manufacturing. So again, plasma cutting, laser cutting, uh, 3D printing is a majority of it. But the moment you pigeonhole yourself into a 3D printing business is the moment you become less of a well-rounded business. Um, you find yourself sort of going, oh, well, this is all I do and that's all I'm going to do, where you got to branch out and think bigger and, and upscale as you keep going. So there's a lot of people with 3D printers, but you've got 3D printers and a successful business. So what's your secret to your success? What tips would you give to someone wanting to emulate you? It's a lot of hard work. There's no sort of like, I'll print this thing and I'll make tons of money. It's all, there's design work, there's hours of labor involved in it. It's not just a, oh, I've bought a 3D printer and I'm gonna go on Thingiverse and print things out and make tons of money because it doesn't happen at all. We go and look at vehicles. We're driving out to car dealerships and so on and so forth when new vehicles come out to make to measure up things, make new parts, go back there, come back here, test it, drive back out there, go and have a look at it again. What I would say is that if you are looking to use a 3D printer to produce a part for a business, um, look in your own uh, sort of work patterns or anything that you use at the moment. What could you use to make life easier? What could you use that doesn't exist to make life easier? What market can you make uh, that is not there at the moment that you can basically uh, sort of tap into. Coming up with an idea of like, hey, this is a problem and we could save X amount of time by fixing it with this part or something like that. Never sort of down talk anyone else's product. Um, always try and keep yourself uh, as a, look, this is my thing, I know it works. Feel free to test it out. If you wanna give out free samples of what you do, um, there is uh, obviously you're going to lose a cost in that, but that's part of the business as in, you know, being a helpful person that can make something happen is uh, for a lot of these companies I found is worth a lot more than um, just trying to jam a part down their throat saying this is going to be the best. It's going to be the greatest thing. Miles, thank you very much. Hopefully right. it's been valuable for everyone at home. and They've got some great tips. If anything rung particularly true with you, make sure to leave it down in the comments section below. Miles and I have a really exciting project coming up, so look out for that in the near future. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy, profitable 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.